Hello Internet, this is Oscar Vilis again, this time with a video on generalized aitken stephensons method. We'll go over how to derive it, some examples, and discuss the order. First, some scaffolding. You'll need to have seen my original video on Stephenson's method with Aitken's delta squared, as well as fixed point iteration for systems of equations, in order to understand this video. We'll use as a primary example the example used from my earlier video on fixed point iteration for systems of equations, with f of x equal to x squared minus y minus 1 and x minus y squared plus 1. When we use fixed point iteration on that example, starting from 1, 2, eventually we reach a solution. If we take each of those iterations and subtract the actual solution, eventually this approach is 0. Also, if you multiply the Jacobian times each of those differences, you'll notice that each new difference is essentially the Jacobian times the old difference. Using this expression, we can solve for x star, although it might be more useful to first solve for j. Let's continue to do one more iteration of this sequence and then subtract the two equations. When we distribute j, we can simplify the equation to simply be x sub n plus 2 minus x sub n plus 1 is approximately the Jacobian times x sub n plus 1 minus x sub n. If we let little delta x sub n equal to x sub n plus 1 minus x sub n, we can simplify that expression to simply be delta x sub n plus 1 is approximately j times delta x sub n. If we use our same sequence from earlier and compute little delta x, then multiply that times the Jacobian, we see that this approximation still holds. I'm switching to k here just to avoid confusion when we start doing n by n matrices. Using this approximation, we would like to solve for j. The trouble is that's an n by n matrix and delta x is an n element vector. But by combining vectors to make an n by n matrix, we can use these matrices that are now n by n to try and solve for j. If we let those matrices be called delta x, then delta x sub k plus 1 is approximately j times delta x. If you multiply by an inverse, now we have an approximation for j. Let's return to our earlier goal of solving for x star using this expression. First, distributing j, then moving our x star terms to the right. If we complete the square and essentially factor out i minus j, then we can rearrange and factor out another i minus j and simplify a term to simply be delta x. Then multiply both sides by the inverse of i minus j and distribute. We're left with this expression meaning x star is approximately equal to x sub n plus i minus j inverse times delta x sub n. Having this expression for x star and this expression for j, we can combine them to come up with this rather long expression for x star. Doing some fancy math, we can simplify things to be this expression. I'll have a hint on how to do this at the end of the video. Then, if we let delta squared x be the difference between two delta x's, we can simplify it yet again to be this approximation for x star. What this approximation is actually equal to, we'll call x hat. Let's do an example of solving for x hat. Using three iterations of fixed point iteration, we can compute three delta x's, then combine them into these two matrices. Afterwards, use the difference between these two matrices, and then compute the inverse. Then we simply plug in everything that we know to come up with this expression for x hat. Using generalized Aitken, we can also generalize Stephenson's method. Starting with a system of equations represented with f of x equal to zero, a fixed point iteration version of that called g of x, a starting x, and some ending epsilon, compute x hat equal to Aitken's delta squared method generalized, then restart with x equal to x hat until the norm of f of x hat is less than some epsilon. Here's an example using the same f and g from earlier, starting from x0 equal to 1, 2. Using fixed point iteration, it takes about 13 iterations for this to find a solution, but with Stephenson's method, it only takes two iterations. Do note, though, that each Aitken step requires three iterations of fixed point. 
Let's look at another example, but this time with a different g of x. With normal fixed point iteration, this ends up diverging. When we apply Aitken Stephenson's, this actually converges in four iterations. For why this happens, let's look back at Elements in Numerical Analysis by Peter Hennessy. You may recall this text from my earlier video on fixed point iteration for systems of equations. In it, he writes, this algorithm has not yet been fully investigated from the theoretical point of view. As it stands, it is not even fully defined since there is no indication of what is to be done if delta squared x is singular. It is therefore impossible to prove that the algorithm converges, let alone it converges quadratically. Substantial experimental evidence, and also some theoretical considerations, seem to indicate, however, that the algorithm is indeed quadratically convergent in a large number of cases, even when ordinary iteration diverges. Of course, that's not where the story ends. Hennessy's original publication had been picked up by others. And fun fact, he also dedicated this book to George E. Forsyth. If you're familiar with my video on Brent's method, then you've heard of it. One of the people who picked it up was Noda, who published a series of papers proving why Aiken Stephenson can induce convergence, specifically citing Hennessy. Another was Neil who in 1991 was able to prove the quadratic convergence behavior of Aiken Stephenson. I'll have links to all these papers in the description box below the video. While I don't want to go over the proofs entirely, I do want to give you an intuition as to why they work. First, we know that from fixed point iteration, normally this expression can lead to divergence, but with Aitken's delta squared method, the equation for x star is still true even if j is unstable. And the reason we're getting quadratic convergence is because we're using the Jacobian in a roundabout way. To summarize, we can achieve quadratic convergence using Aiken Stephenson without computing a Jacobian. You can also induce convergence even when the normal fixed point iteration would diverge. And even though it has fewer iterations, we still need to do some matrix multiplication and compute an inverse. So there is a trade off. Also, you still have to worry about having a singular delta squared x because that means we can invert it. A hint for the fancy math is that the inverse of AB is B inverse A inverse. And the last thing I'll leave you with is notice the similarity between normal Aitken's method and the generalized Aitken's method. The code that I use for these examples will be hosted on GitHub. I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos and I hope that you find them helpful. If you have questions, concerns, or comments, or even suggestions for future videos, please be sure to leave them in the comments below. Thank you.